Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <tuh> It's going to be reverbing me every single time. Uh, before we begin, inshallah, I just want to make a couple of du'as uh, because, mashallah, meeting this wonderful community, I was privy to learn that many of us are going for Umrah and Hajj. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for everyone who's going. You know, to make it the visas, the safar, and the return is easy, inshallah. May Allah allow us to all go to the Haramain, Sharifain, Amin, Ya Rabbil Alameen. May Allah accept it on behalf of us and the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And our beloved brother Naveed, he's in the hospital right now. He drove us, he drove me from the airport to here. May Allah give him Shifa Kam and Ajila, return home safely. I mean, Ya Rabbana Naveed. So, uh, you have to give me a little bit of Udur. It's been, uh, let's see, last time I had a coffee was 9 a.m. So, I'm just going to freestyle it right now, inshallah. Okay. Uh, this topic is many people want this topic to be about LGBT, right? But I didn't choose this topic for LGBT for many reasons. We could have discussed this topic, but you can find many things. On YouTube, you can find many videos and refutation of them. You can find many discussions and many books. If you want any books, I can refer you to many kitabs. Whatever book you want, I can give you. Whatever YouTube uh, lecture you want, I can give you. The topic of LGBT refutations, that's very well done. But what's important for all of us and for, for everyone is the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is not about refuting people. It's not about refuting people. The goal of the Ummah of the Prophet وسلم, is to see how you can save people from Jahannam. And I found that the, the crux of that and the understanding of that is in the man, the Nabi, the Rasul, Lut alayhi salam. This is someone, and this is my, my main important goal before everything else is that we can talk about Lut alayhi salam. He's that one prophet. He's that one, anyone here? Do you know anyone named Lut? Father, grandfather, children, nobody names their children Lut. No one even talks about Lut. Have you ever heard of a, a, a khutbah about Lut alayhi salam? Whereas he's a prophet who's mentioned in 14 surahs of the Quran, and he's a prophet who's mentioned 20 time, 27 times throughout the Quran, in very notable places. And Allah Ta'ala brings him in contrast or in, in discussion with Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam. Nuh alayhi salam is the first Rasul to the world, the first messenger to the world. Allah Ta'ala brings the name of Lut alayhi salam next to such an individual. Whereas, Lut, whereas Ibrahim alayhi salam is mentioned, Lut alayhi salam is right there. There's always discussions of Nabi Lut alayhi salam amongst great prophets. Yet no one even names the children him. No one ever discusses him. We don't know anything about him. Yet he is so critical for our modern time. If we want to understand how to handle these situations of LGBT and gender discussions or whatever, you need to know how the Nabi Lut alayhi salam examined the situation. And this is my goal here. I don't, if you, if you alhamdulillah get out of this, mashallah, understanding, okay, these people are wrong because such and such and such. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. That's great. Fantastic. Mashallah, shabash. Good job. My main thing is that, inshallah, I want everyone here to love Lut alayhi salam. You know, I had, mashallah, in my, in my community in Massachusetts, I wanted to name my son Nuh. Then this one guy, he heard I wanted to name my son Nuh, so he named the kid Nuh. Then I was like, you know what, forget it. I, all right, he took Nuh, so I'll take Hud. You know, Nuh, then Hud. You know, it rhymes. Bengalis, we like rhyming, right? So every name that not rhymes is good. My older brother's name is Wakil, my name is Shakil. You know, so Nuh, Hud. And then what happens, this guy has another kid, and what does he name him? Hud. So I'm like, he's not getting loot. So this is going to be mine, inshallah. Okay? Allah to make it. I mean. Jazakallah for that. Okay, so in Lut alayhi salam is someone who's so important and so notable. Okay, and so I want to make this clear. I don't want to talk about the refutation of LGBT. If you want, we can discuss this afterwards. What I want to talk about is how you interact with them, how you engage with them. And that takes a, a Nabawi mind, a prophetic mind to do that. And so you learn that from Sayyidina Lut alayhi salam. This is the lesson of Lut alayhi salam story. And it's not easy. Wallahi, it is not easy. Anyone who considers to engage in this, with this community, we don't have any political Muslim leaders who can handle this job. Because no one has that prophetic mentality of how to deal with these people like that. It is not easy at all. So how, what do I mean? It's not, it's not a small land we're talking about that Lut alayhi was sent to. Lut alayhi was not sent to small little, uh, small little communities or small town or whatever. He was sent to the land of Sadum, the land of Sodom. 
When you're talking about one of the critical areas in the area of Jerusalem, you're talking about one of the main cities. You have all these cities, right? Small little towns. You have a small little towns and you have the main city right there. For example, you have DC and then you have a, little, a couple of towns all around. So you know the central area, the capital is DC. Another good example is Makkah. Makkah is the, the Ummul Qura. It is the mother of the so Luta and Islam and every prophet is not sent to small, small towns. They're sent to the Ummul Qura of the area. They're sent to the mother of the cities. And so Luta and Islam is not sent to a small nation. He's sent to the land of Sadum, the land of Sodom, where it has all these towns around it, all these towns around it. The central area is the area of Sodom. And so this area of Sodom is described with one word in the Quran. This is that one word that Allah that describes everything. When someone asked me, he said that the discussion of Lut and Isa, the discussion of Sodom is not found in the Quran. I said, you're not reading the Quran close enough. Allah told you everything in that one word. There are people who, who engage in filthy acts. There are people who engage in filthy acts. The word khabis in Arabic is used to describe corrosion. You know, when you have uh, iron and you have something which comes on top of the iron is rust. And eventually, if you don't take care of the rust, what happens? It starts to get deeper and deeper and deeper. It starts to corrode through the layers. Eventually that even like, for example, the, uh, the Statue of Liberty, it looks so solid from the outside, but it's become so corroded from the inside that it's basically half hollow because of the fact that things start to die out and things start to corrode. Allah Dara says, they are such khabis people. It affected their speech. It affected their amal. It affected, it, it affected their amal. It affected their amal. It affected their aqidah and it affected every single field. It affected their speech that whenever they talk, they talk filthy things. What is, it, is, it affected their actions. What are actions to do will be filthy things. It affected their beliefs that they would not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anymore. And they did such terrible things. So you can imagine a husband would cheat on the wife. A wife would cheat on the husband. The, uh, the children would disobey the parents. The parents would neglect the children. All these things you're going to see in modern times reflected in the story of Sayyidina Lut alayhi salam and the people of Sodom. And what do you find? That it's not just the, the family structure which is destroyed. You find that the financial structure is destroyed. You go to the markets, the people are cheating you. When you go to the markets, people are ripping you off. People are robbing you. They used to rob travelers. Travelers who are trying to go to the area of Baitul Maqdis to worship, the area of Sham to worship. The, what do they find? That when they pass by Sodom, they get attacked and they get ambushed. These are the type of people we're talking about. Gambling, riba. You find the central area to be Sodom. This area is even worse than that. We find that you want to, if you, if you find an issue in the markets, then you decide to go to the courts. You'll think that at least the judge will help me. But the judge is corrupt too. The corruption has spread throughout the entire city. It is the entire, entire town of, of Sodom which is doing all these things. The judges are corrupt. You go there, they're going to rule against you, against your favor. Everything that you find, and you and I know the, the primal act that they do, the primary act that they do, the terrible act that they do, which the entire nation is known, as, known for homosexuality and lesbianism. This is something which has affected the entire civilization. So wherever you go in the area of Sodom, it's just the people in fitna and fasad. Fitna and fasad. And this is, by the way, why the Prophet is being told about Lut in the first place. Because of the fact that Nabi wasallam is in an area where people are burying daughters. The area of Nabi is where people are gambling next to the Kaaba, Allahu Akbar. People are, 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 are cheating and raising prices in the area of Makkah al Mukarrama. The Prophet is told, O Nabi of Allah, wasallam, you think you're alone in this. There was a Nabi before you. He also had, had, had to handle things like this. So when you have an area of Sodom, Sadum, you still call it Sadum, it's easier than Saddam, 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 Hussein. No? It's a, 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 the area of Sadum in Arabic is much easier, right? Yeah, much easier. So the, this area is so, it, it, it's, not, it's not an easy area to deal with. If I were to tell any of you guys to go there and say, hey, by the way, give da'wah to them, who can man up to do that? You have to go to the people, you have to go to the rulers, you have to go to the courts, you have to go to the finances, you have to go to every single, uh, you know, every single shu'aba, every single branch of society and reform everything. Who could do that? This is not a low-level job. This is not a low-level job. You're not going to send someone small to handle this job. You're going to send the highest person, the highest of all messengers, one of the greatest people that you have. Allah that will choose the best man for the job. Who does he choose? A very young man. Who is he? He's accompanying another great prophet. His name is Ibrahim alayhi salam. They're giving dawah from, from the area of Iraq and Iran where Ibrahim alayhi salam is originally from. The area of, and the area of Babylon, and then the area of Egypt, and the area of Sham. Wherever he moves, Ibrahim alayhi salam, wherever you hear the story in the Quran, Ibrahim alayhi salam is moving. Who is he moving with? Lut alayhi salam. Lut alayhi salam accompanies him. Allah Ta'ala says that, uh, 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 Inni muhajirun ila rabbi, subhanallah. 
Lut said that I am a I am a muhajir, I'm a migrant for my Lord. Wherever Allah that tells me to go, I go. He's so inspired by Ibrahim alayhi salam. And whenever you say Allah salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim and upon the family of Ibrahim alayhi salam. You're not just making dua for Ibrahim and Sarah and Hajar and Ismail and Ishaq. You're making dua for Lut alayhi salam too. He's the nephew of Ibrahim alayhi salam. You have to understand that even in Salah, we're remembering Lut alayhi salam. He's not a low-level low prophet by any word of any, any level, subhanAllah. Lut alayhi salam is so exceptional. Allah that chooses him to be the Sahabi of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And Allah Ta'ala, when he mentions the favors of, 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 of uh, Allah upon Ibrahim alayhi salam, he says, We saved him, Ibrahim, and Lut to the area that we blessed. And then Allah says, And after that, we gave him Ishaq and Yaqub alayhi salam. In other words, Lut is so exceptional. Allah loves him to be such a great companion of Ibrahim alayhi salam. That Allah Ta'ala says, Oh Lut, I'm going to make you a Rasul. You are chosen to become an Imam now and to lead the people. And Allah and Ibrahim alayhi salam, Lut alayhi salam are both in the area of Sham. And then Allah Ta'ala talks to Lut alayhi salam and says, Lut, your command is to go no longer with Ibrahim. You have to take care of your own land, take your family, and migrate to the area of Sadum and give da'wah to them and invite them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Lut alayhi salam, being a companion of Ibrahim, he knows sacrifice. He knows mujahada. He knows struggle. He knows that he has to go there and change the entire world. He's ready for it, mashallah. So he goes there and he starts to give his da'wah. What do you think he says first? What would you think? He's going to talk against which, which, which sin? Which one is going to talk against? The big daddy, right? Homosexuality. You think that. We all think that. Because why? Because we, we, the same way they want to be identified in a certain way, we also identify them like that. But in the same way, they reduce their humanity, their insaniya, into just one, one quality of themselves, which is that, you know, their sexual orientation or whatever. We also did the same thing. We also reduce them to that. They're not, they're not identified like that. They are insan. They're human beings. إِذْ قَالَ لُوتٌ أَلَا تَتَّقُونَ إِنِّي لَكُمْ رَسُولٌ أَمِينٌ فَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاطِيعُونَ He gives them the kalima, لَا إِلَهِ إِلَى اللَّهُ لُوتٌ رَسُولُ اللَّهُ He tells them that you need to accept Islam. Who has ever thought, even thought about someone like that? That they see a person in this orientation and they think, wow, this person's a kafir. Do you even know their religion? Did you ever ask them what their religion was? Do we ever even bother to even discuss, you know, iman and aqidah, aqidah with them? We always say, what? Well, oh, they're doing this act. They're filthy and disgusting. So we don't even talk to them. Lut says, hey, guys, first accept Islam. Because if you accept la ilaha illallah, my job is done. So he comes and first gives them da'wah ilallah. And to him, he says, For, obey, uh, worship Allah and obey me. And guys, by the way, I'm not asking you for anything. I'm not asking you for a position or a title or a status. Don't think I came here for anything else. I don't need any money here. I just came because why? Because Allah told me to come. And my ajr is on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a true Nabi. And this is what we need to first and foremost understand. When we see such people in the community, remember they're a human being. If they were to die, they go to Jahannam. If they were to die, they go to Jahannam. And it doesn't bother us. It doesn't affect us. It should pain our hearts. Say, ya Allah, this person might go to Jahannam because of what they're believing in. I have to change their aqidah. So no longer do I just talk about homosexuality with them, the gay gene or whatever. I start to flip the discussion and I start to say, will you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Let's first talk about who created the world, who created the universe. What came before that? What came before that? You and I have to agree that something without a beginning had to start everything. And start to explain Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to them. Lut starts with this. Fear Allah and obey me. And then he goes and says, now he talks about the major sin. The big issue of the time. He sees what the problem is and he identifies it. And he starts to treat it like a, a doctor would treat a disease. Before we get into it, because nowadays what happens is we find that people will say that the sin of Sadum is not the sin of homosexuality. You'll find that people say that the sin of Sadum is that they, they used to uh, rape men. Right? That was the thing. The issue of rape. You know, so what is called the R hypothesis. right? The R hypothesis. Let's take it. Let's run with it. Let's see what the Quran says. Uh, you go to men out of the lust uh, instead of women. If it meant what they said it meant, and Allah is critiquing that you go to men instead of women, what would that mean? 
You're raping the wrong people. <laughs> this is absolutely wrong. When you interpret the Quran like this, you're going to find mistakes and plot holes and issues every single time. We'll be objective. We'll be honest. Look, their sin is homosexuality. It's what it is. But it's not going to be dealt with the way you and I deal with it. Atatuna the Quran amin al Lut says that would you rather, are you really going, you know, instead of all, all the human be all the, you know, beings in the world, all the creatures in the world, are you really going towards men? You know, he's, he's saying that honestly speaking, do you think that what you're finding in a man, he says, he tells him honestly, says, honestly, do you think that what you're finding in a man, you can't find in a woman? That the same way that you're having these emotions and this loving relationship, you can't find it with a woman? He's like, he's saying, being honest, could you, could it, hypothetically speaking, could it happen? Where you could find something like this. He comes to them in such a nice way. Not fighting them or attacking them or saying that you're wrong. This is what it is. He says that you, would you rather go to men and you leave that which Allah gave you from your halal spouses? He says that you can, the same thing you find with these people, you have emotions here. And Allah says, The Quran tells us that the, the wife that you have is where you can find sakina in. No matter how many husbands will deny it here. You'll find the sakina with her. That's what Allah Ta'ala says. You'll find between you love and mercy. Allah Ta'ala says it. Oh, oh, people. He says, oh, my people. Do you really think that men will only give you this? You don't think a woman can do that as well? He tells them very nicely. This, this is a prophet talking to people. There's no nature versus nurture nonsense. Everyone brings it down to nature versus nurture. Oh, it's a gay gene. Is there a gay gene or not? Who cares? My God, subhanAllah. In Islam, it goes deeper than nature or nurture. Allah Ta'ala says, forget about the DNA. Certain good deeds are embedded in your soul. And certain sins are embedded in your soul. You and I are responsible for correcting those things. Lut does not say, I blame it on your nature or nurture. He said, Allah Ta'ala created us as souls and we all have to deal with our problems. This is the sin that Allah Ta'ala has put on you that you have to deal with. And Allah Ta'ala has given you a halal outlet. Now, mashallah, shabash, mashallah. You and I go see, we're walking down the street, mashallah. And he sees Rebecca. Allah Ta'ala. He's falling in love with Rebecca. He loves Rebecca so much. He's making zikr of Rebecca every single night. Rebecca, Rebecca, Rebecca. You need to get that boy married. You need to get that boy that married because the only way he'll get off of Rebecca is he has to have a halal wife. You know what I'm saying? Many times it happens to us that a, halal, a haram glance is given. What did the Prophet say? He said, if you look at a woman that you're not supposed to look at, this wife is to keep her gaze low. Right? That's why the gaze are all high. Hmm? You're probably the only one understood this. Okay. Jazakallah. Jazakallah. Okay, alhamdulillah. We're supposed, to, we're supposed to keep our eyes low. We're not supposed to be looking around. The Prophet said, if you did look at some woman that's not allowed for you, where are you supposed to go? Go to your wife. Literally what Lut is telling them. He's saying that if you're having a problem, just go to your wife, she'll handle it for you. Why are you doing this? He's so amazing in his da'wah. Number one, he tells them and says, that why, isn't, isn't it possible you'll find it in your wife too? Number, number two, he tells them that if you're having this problem of this addiction, this, you have to go towards men. He says, just go to your wife. She'll calm you down real quick, boy. You'll get much better, mashallah. You'll become clear. Your mind will start to think again. The guy going through so much stress the entire day. You know, masjid committee, imam sahab, boss, all this stuff. Everyone's frying your brain. And subhanAllah, you go to wife at nighttime, mashallah. You know, <laughs> Allah, but everything's just better at the end of the day, mashallah. Man, oh, sisters, if you want to keep your husband happy, just two things. One of them I can say in front of people, the other one I can't say in front of people. One of them is you feed him. The other one, you understand what I'm saying. Okay. If you do these things, mashallah, your husband will be under your hand every single time. People say, how do I control my wife, husband? You got to control one part, you know what I'm saying? So this is what I'm saying here. Lut alayhi salam. Lut alayhi salam. He, he tells the people, number one is, your wives are good for you. Number two is, that he says that you're, if you go to your wife, she'll stop you from having these urges. Why are you doing this? And number three is that Lut alayhi salam, always in the Quran, I haven't found a single spot after all the research I've done on this topic. I was looking for any time Lut Aysan criticized their inside, the internal. He never once criticized the internal. Atatun, 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 innakum latatun. He always says you're doing an action. He always criticizes the action. Because why? Because internal, you can't really control it. Sometimes a desire will come. Sometimes a person wants to look at the opposite gender. Sometimes the, the laptop is open, he wants to look at haram things. Sometimes alcohol, you feel like certain things, certain things come up in the mind. What are you supposed to do as a human being, as a Muslim? You're supposed to control yourself. That's what it means. Lut never once says, by the way, I know these feelings are inside. You, have to, you can't think like that. He said, I know they're happening to you. you got to control what you're doing on the outside. Don't let that change you. Don't let that control you. Don't be an animal. Are you really just so low that your entire life is not defined by this? Like an animal. That's what an animal does. An animal does what? Eat, drink, and procreate. That's all an animal does. Is that what you are? Aren't you greater? Aren't you built for greater things? 
وَتَذَرُونَ مَا خَلَقَ لَكُمْ رَبُّكُمْ مِنْ أَزْوَاجِكُمْ Don't you realize your Lord created you for bigger things? Allah don't want you to get Jannah. Allah created a wife for you. Allah don't want you to make greater things for you. You're greater than this. You're better than this. And so he critiques them and he, he hits them. بَلْ أَنْتُمْ قَوْمٌ عَادُونَ بَلْ أَنْتُمْ قَوْمٌ مُسْرِفُونَ بَلْ أَنْتُمْ قَوْمٌ تَجْحَلُونَ He said, rather you are people that are doing israf. You are people that are going way past bounds. You're going through or towards extremes. And you're emotional people. All you guys are emotional people. He hits them so hard. He hits them exactly where it hurts. He said, you're just following your desires. What does the Quran tell us to, to not do? Follow our desires. What does the Quran tell us to do? Obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter what problem you're dealing with, you have to obey Allah. Ibn Uthaisam says, I don't care what it is. Deal with it and obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how he gives da'wah. He never, he never judges them or offends them or hurts them. He just says, you're created for something greater than this. Don't get distracted. This is the da'wah of a Nabi. And so this is not the only thing he talks about. He says, and by the way, you guys attract travelers. Have you no shame? They're going to areas to worship. They're going to the area of Sham to worship. And they're going down to Makkah to worship. They're going through the path. They're going through this way and this way. They're travelers going for ibadah and you're attacking them. Have you no shame? And Luta goes and says that other than, you know, uh, and your society has become so rotten and so, so spoiled. That let alone the fact that um, the fact that you, you do this in private, you, you even in your gatherings, you start doing these actions openly and you start discussing these things. So what is he trying to do? For example, my, if my son, if my son were someone who were, were to be watching something wrong on the internet or something like that, and I were to find out, I would take him on the side and I'll tell him, son, if you were to do this in public, how would you feel? If your mom and dad were there, how would you feel? What are you trying to do for him? Make him feel ashamed. Luta Aisam says, look, you, haven't, you guys lost all your haya. You have no more shame. You attack travelers that are going for ibadah. And you're doing this stuff in the open. What happened to your shame? al haya is shu'batan min al-iman. The Prophet Aisam tells us, modesty is from iman. This is exactly why this community and society in America, back in the 50s, for a lady to show her ankles, she'd be considered, you know, like very, very ranchy, you know, ranchy type of woman, mashallah, oh, exotic lady, you know. If you were to show your elbow, subhanAllah, you know, these people would have been like, you know, completely shocked by that. Nowadays, it's like, subhanAllah, if you're not wearing, if you are wearing clothes at the beach, they think you're a weirdo. You know, they're basically all walking around like animals, all of them are naked. They all say they come from apes anyways, they all look like apes too. You know, half of them don't even shave at the beach, right, I'm saying? You know, they all, they all look the same as animals, because they want to be like animals, eat, drink, and whatever. They exactly what you see, because they lost their haya. So Lut is an amazing prophet. He, he attacks them where it hurts and he tells them that, look, you have to get your shame back. You have to get your shame back. Bring it all back. Return it to where it's supposed to be. And this is how a da'wah of a Nabi goes. Now Lut he continues like this and every single day he does this. And then without fail, he does this. Like Nuh salam, every single day and night, he meets them and he talks to them. This is all he discusses about and all he mentions to them. And so what do you think the people of Sadum do? What do you think they feel? Do they, do they like him? Absolutely not. You're that one religious student in the school. You're praying your, your, your prayers. You're praying your Zohar Salah. And you're, you're not doing what other people do. You don't drink. You don't smoke. You don't do anything. You don't do anything that everyone else is doing. And they think of you as weird. They don't like you. But the problem is they can't respond to Lut alayhi salam because they have no argument. Because he never gave them an argument in the first place. He didn't mention no gene. He didn't mention no nature, no nurture, nothing. He just said, look, you're created for worship. And Allah does said, this is haram. What are you going to argue with? So the only thing that the people of Lut could say, they used, to say, they used to say, the only, the only thing they used to say is, take Lut exile him from your community. Take out his family. Take out them. And take out Lut himself. He doesn't belong here. If you don't stop Lut, you will be from those who will exile and will vanish. So now what happens is when we are pushed to this point, as Muslims, when we are being attacked for our beliefs and the fact that we're doing the right thing, everyone's doing the wrong thing, what do we normally do? McDonald's becomes Zabiha Halal. McDonald's becomes Zabiha Halal. Because why? Because I don't want to fight you anymore. I don't want to attack you anymore. I'm tired of it. I'll just accept you. If you want me to rally with you or side by side, I'll put the light, light, light next to your rainbow, rainbow flag, whatever. That's what people do, unfortunately. They just give up. They say, forget it. If they're going to kick us out of America, if they're going to ban, ban my passport, then forget about it. I don't want to even do this anymore. What does Luta say? 
He says, guys, I'll let you know something. I really hate your actions. <laughs> he said, Inni li amalikum min al I'm from those people that hate your actions. It's not just me that hates them. Many other people hate them too. We all hate them, by the way. It's not a good action. He doesn't budge. He never breaks. He never bends his principles. He says, this is haram, it's haram. It's not going to change. No matter what, what country, society comes in the world, it will never change. It is haram, it's haram. You got to work on that. And then what, the, what happens is, Rabbi najini mimma ya'man, wa ahli mimma ya'man. Oh Allah, I can't talk to these people. Ya Allah, you save me from what they're doing. You save me from what they're doing. And so now the people got even worse. And so they want to do something. The people so do want to do something. But they know if they kick out Lut salam like they, they were to do it. Like for example, uh, you know, two guys are going to get into a boxing ring or into the octagon. And so what happens is, you know, instead of, instead of trying to fight him, because you know you're going to lose. The guy, he trains like Khabib. So you're not going to beat him. So what do you do? You say, you know what, let me feed him some food. Try to see if you can not make weight. Right? So then he can just get out before the fight even starts. So if you kick him out beforehand, people just think you're a coward. You know? You, you agitate him. Like, you know, for example, you call him a certain word. So that way he gets angry. If he were to hit you before the fight, then the fight is canceled. So you got what you wanted. So the people of Sadum, they're very smart. They said that if we were to kick him out right now, then people all think we were cowards. So no, no, that's not what we can do. Rather than that, they, they made mashwara. They all discussed with one another. They said, how can we stop this loot? How can we stop him? And by the way, you know, uh, subhanAllah, they, they come together and they discuss this thing. And they say, you know what? The only thing we can do is ban him. We have to ban him from everything. We have to ban him from meetings. From, from any, any of our gatherings. He can't come outside and talk to anyone anymore. He's officially banned from talking anywhere outside. And internally in his house, he can't, he's banned from bringing any guests. He's not allowed to meet anyone anymore. You know what you call that in, in modern times? Being canceled. SubhanAllah. Say SubhanAllah. It's the same thing that we're facing today. The same thing they did back then, SubhanAllah. They said, just ban him from everything. And if he were to do anything, if he were to talk to anyone, we'll, just, we'll, commit, we'll commit the act right in front of him with those people. Such khabis people. So Lut is pushed to this point where they, they, he can't have any meetings outside, inside, here and there. And it's not even the case where, mashallah, I told you that, subhanAllah, at least you have a loving wife to go back to home and you can talk about it and you can discuss all these issues and you can feel comfort in one another. Wife can talk to husband, husband can talk to wife. What does Lut have at home? He doesn't even have a wife to go to that will love him like that. Allah that describes his wife not like a good wife. Right? What is his wife in the Quran? Allah مَثَلًا لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Allah says he, she is an example for those who disbelieve. The wife of Lut and the wife of Nuh. That they were under great slaves of Allah. Salihaini, pious people. فَخَانَتَهُمَا But they used to be treacherous to them. They used to be against them. So when Lut would come and say that I met with such and such people today, he would tell his family at home, what would his wife do? Tell everyone in the community that Lut did such and such. If any guest were to come home, she hated her husband so much that she would go around and tell everyone that this is this happened. And so, you know, she snitches on everything that Lut does. This is the type of thing that he deals with at home. Now, mind you, he doesn't divorce her. It's something that we need to understand. There's a book called Safahat Min Akhbari Al-Anbiya'i wal Ulama'i Was Sabri Ala Zawjadihinna Wal Hilmi It's a really good book. You all should read it. It's a book about how husbands should learn to have more patience with their wives. It says, it's akhbar, stories from the anbiya, from the prophets, and the salihin. Okay, you thought this was just going to be an LGBT. Trust me, it wasn't even, in the first place, it wasn't about LGBT. It's all about sahir, okay? Our thing is what? We get so angry and so upset and so everything, you know? The other day, we dealt with the talaq case. Allah, for three months, man's been married for three months, he gave divorce. SubhanAllah, have you no sabr? Don't you know what it means to be a man? Don't you know that, SubhanAllah, if you can't, you know, if... You know, SubhanAllah, you have to comfort yourself that SubhanAllah, you know, if, I, if I'm patient with her, if I'm nice to her, she has no one else to talk to. One time, Umar radiallahu anhu, well, you know, a man came, he said, I need advice. My wife is messing with me and bothering me and everything at home and I'm getting so upset. I can't deal with this. So he goes to Umar radiallahu anhu's house. He's like, I can get advice from Umar. He's a big dog, you know, big man. He's going he's gonna to do it. So he goes to the door and he's about to knock on the door and he hears that Umar's wife is yelling at him from inside. You don't do this, you don't do this, you don't do this, you don't do this. And then, and the man's like, man, I was about to knock on the door, but Umar is dealing with the same problems I have. And so then, so then he will always like, if Mulana Sahib is dealing with the same stuff, man, he can't give me no nasiha. So then he gets out, and then, then Umar Adina, he heard someone coming to the door, and he rushes to the door, and he opens the door, he sees a man going away. He says, oh man, come back, come back. What, did, what happened? You had a problem, some issue? He goes, yeah, Umar, I came to you because I needed some nasiha. But it seems like we both kind of need some nasiha, you know? <laughs> so it's not, really, it's not really happening here. So Umar Adina, who says, no, 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 you have to understand. You have to understand. She, she takes care of the kids. 
she cleans the clothes, she cooks my food, she takes care of everything at home. I took her from her, house, her father's house. I brought her into my house. Can't I just tolerate her a little bit? Let her say whatever she wants. Subhanallah. This is what it means to be a husband. Okay, and inshallah, it might be again, I'll talk about what it means to be a good wife. That means the second visit, okay? <laughs> so now, Lut Lu, Lu has to deal with this at home, but never once does he do, consider divorce. Never once does he give a talaq. He doesn't say anything. He just he tolerates it. Because that's who Allah Ta'ala gave him. He understands if this Allah does ni'mah to me, then I have to accept it. Is this what Allah has given me? And so Lut and you can imagine then, where do you go? Where do you go? And mind you, Sadum is not looking at how many people are Muslim in the community, by the way. Lut has been giving da'wah for a while. He's been giving da'wah for a while. How many Muslims are in the community? How many people has accepted Islam? How many numbers? A hundred? Ten? Five? Zero. He's the only one. And Sadum is so angry because they say that if he doesn't like what we're doing, it makes us all angry. That you have to agree with us. If you don't conform to what we're doing, it's not right. They, don't, they won't accept the fact that you are believing something else. It's not right for you to believe something else. The same exact thing you hear. So Lut has nowhere to go. Outside, inside, anywhere. But he has one, one person, one being, one person in his corner that will never leave him. And who is that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabbi najini mimma ya'malun. Rabbi najini mimma qawmin mufsidin. Rabbi najini, Rabbi najini, Rabbi najini. He's just making dua now. Ya Allah, not here or not there. I have no one to go to except for you, Ya Allah. And you never abandoned me. You never left me alone. Ya Allah, please save me from these people. Ya Allah, help me against them. Do something for me. Allah, protect me. Ya Rabbul Alameen. He's crying to Allah. And this is the thing. We always forget who's really in our corner. Wallahi, every human will die. We all rely on humans. This is the main problem. Everyone's looking for love from this man and love from that woman. These people will give you some love in this world, but the ultimate love is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what it is. No matter what your orientation you are, the true being that loves you is Allah. And the only one you can truly love is Allah. Because everyone else will die. Allah Ta'ala never dies. We need to call Allah every single night because that's what Lut did in this difficult time. So then Allah Ta'ala sends some help. He sends some help. Some three, three handsome guys come into the community. Attractive people, mashallah Ta'ala, like your Mufti Sahib here, mashallah. Three nice guys come in. And now they all walk into the town, mashallah. And then they see Lut he's doing some work outside. And then he sees these three people. He became so saddened by seeing them. And then he, 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 he felt the limitations of his hand. He couldn't do what he wanted to do. Right? What, is, what is happening to Lut? He's a Nabi. He sees three handsome guys what's coming in the community. What's going to happen to them? Terrible things are going to happen. So Lut is very worried about them. He's very scared for them. And it's making his entire day miserable. Because now he's knowing that someone's going to be attacked and oppressed. And does not settle heart, easy well at the heart of a Nabi. He's becoming so saddened because of this. He said, this is a very tight day, very difficult day. This is a difficult day. I don't know what to do right now. Lut he panics and he thinks and he says, that I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a mezban, then my mehman. I'm a mezban, then my mehman. Like Ibrahim would never eat without a guest. Lut said, they're my guests. I have to eat with them. So then he brings them home. He takes them home. And he says, you know what? We'll, we'll take care of you here. We'll protect you. So that we'll, we'll be your refugee camp when there is no refugee camp. If someone needs to adopt you, I will adopt you. If someone needs to care for you and protect you, I will protect you. This is Lut alayhi salam. Lut alayhi salam does this. Who snitches to everyone from the outside, from the inside? His wife goes and tells everyone, hey, he has three attractive, handsome men at home. That right before this, the people of Sadum just committed haram acts. And now they're coming again for round two. And now they come to the house of Lut alayhi salam, rushing and storming to his house. They're coming to him, so happy and rejoicing. Yes, yes, Lut, finally he disobeyed, he disobeyed us. He disagreed with us. He went against us. Now we're really going to go into his house and take everything that we can. So they go and they start slamming the door, knocking the door, breaking the door, shoving in there. Lut sees the people come in. A few people come in from the community. It's not, it's not a big house, right? A few people come in and the, the guests are there. And Lut starts to panic and saying, oh people, what are you doing? What sense do you have? You slammed it. You broke my... You came into... All these things are coming. Well, imagine this happened to you. What would you do? Who do you have at home? Your wife and your kids, your daughters. If some man came in and bars the door, what are you going to do? You don't even need to tell me to say, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. I'll finish him right before anybody even understood the matter. You know, this is how angry you'll get. Well, Lut is a Nabi. 
And if you're wondering why is Lutaism chosen, it's because the word Lut itself, in both Hebrew and in Arabic, it means something which envelops the heart, something which wraps around the heart. It's someone who's so soft and gentle. This is the only way to deal with sinners. People think if you're going to deal with a sinner, you have to be rude and angry to them. It's not the way you deal with sins. You have to be as soft and as kind as you can. Wallahi, my, I have family members who are, they suffer from the same issue that we're talking about today. And never once we said a bad word to them. Every single time we said salam to them. Because why? Because we don't want them to lose their kalima. Because why? Because if they lose their kalima, that's the worst thing. Many times we'll see someone come in the masjid that doesn't look like he's the right way. Tattoos all over his body, has earpieces like this and this. And immediately we say that this person, I didn't want to stand near him. Because why? Because this person doesn't seem the right part. But we don't understand what people's lives are, what sacrifice he made to come into the masjid. We have to remember these things because that's how you change people's hearts. So Lut Aisam says this, he says, Ya qawmi inna ha wa lai dhaiti, wa la dhahtahun. He says, all my, all, my, all my beloved people, all my qawm, my nation, these are my guests. Please don't disgrace me in front of them. Please, please don't disgrace me. You know, fear Allah. Don't, don't become a disgrace here. Please. He's, he's talking to him as nice as he can. And he says something so amazing that only could come from a Nabi. This is the only words that could come from a Nabi. He said, if, look, if you were to change and become good people, these are my daughters. I'll wed them to you. If you want, I'll give them to you, Nikah. Change your ways. Become muttaqeen. No man in the world would ever do this. Only the kindest heart would ever consider this. That if you want a person to change truly, you'll say, you know what? If they become a person, la ilaha illallah, then mashallah, they're good Muslims. I can wed you my daughters. And subhanAllah, Allah Ta'ala describes the situation at home. La'amruk. Innahum lafi sakratihim ya'mahun. For those who know Arabic, what does la'amruk mean? Qasam. By your Amr, Umar in Arabic, you know, when you say Amr, meaning your, by your life. By your life. Who's the, your life here? Who's Allah the talking to? Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Oh, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, by your life. Ibn Abbas anhu said that this is the greatest Qasam in the entire Quran. This is the greatest Qasam in the entire Quran. The greatest oath you can take. Because the bigger thing that you need to say, the bigger thing you need to swear by. So Allah swears by the sun. I take an oath by the sun, I take an oath by the moon, and I take an oath by the star, I take an oath by this and that. This is the only time in throughout the Quran Allah swears by Nabi Sallallahu life. Allah Prophet Sallallahu no matter how great of Amin you are, trustworthy you are, akhlaq you are, dhu khuluqin azim you are, amazing person you are, great character, amazing, soft, gentle, you don't understand what type of situation Lut was in. Even by your life, Muhammad Sallallahu you need to understand, innahum lafi sakratihim ya'mahun, these people are completely intoxicated. They're completely drunk. They have no idea what they're doing anymore. Absolute madness has gone into them. They'll follow you. They'll search you on Facebook. They'll, they'll cancel you there. They'll find you on Twitter. They'll cancel you there. They'll find you. They'll look up things 10, 15, 20 years ago just so they can say, you know what? This person should never be listened to anymore. This, literally, this is psychotic type of behavior. <laughs> they are in some intoxicated, some drunk stuff. They're smoking some good stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they're completely wandering in this, uh, this sukran. So at this moment, Lut says, and this is the, 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 the crux, the, the climax of the situation. Lut says this and he says, when they say these things to him, he goes and says, Rashid, don't you have an intelligent, reasonable man amongst you? And he sees the depression and anxiety, he goes and says, He says, if only I had some power. You know what, enough is enough. You broke into my house, you, you violated my sanctuary, you did all these terrible things. And now you're even trying to do this haram act in front of me. You were trying to attack my guests. He says, I've only had something to stop you with. Right? And this is when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi is being told, Oh Prophet of Islam, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one day will come where you'll be able to stop these sins the way you want to stop them, with strength and power. But Lut Aisam did not have that at that time. So he had something else. Oh, awi ila ruklin shadid. Or maybe I can take refuge to a very strong pillar. To a strong pillar. And so what is that strong pillar? The strong pillar in your life is that person that you rely on and you depend on. So for example, a building, even if a lot of these pillars were to go down, as long as the main pillar is there, will the building go down? No, it will stay up. Same way with a tent, for example. A tent will have a bunch of pegs here and there, but the main one is the middle one. And so the scholars have described that La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah is like the main pillar in our lives, and everything else is secondary in, the, in that sense. If you have that strong pillar in the middle, it will hold everything up. Lut was not talking about his family. He wasn't talking about a government. He wasn't talking about a community or a nation or a society. He said, Ya Allah, you are always my pillar. 
Allah, you're always my pillar. That no matter what people say to me in the world, you are there for me, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, I'm relying on you now. If, if the whole entire building is shaking, I'm going to grab onto the pillar because I know that's not going down. So he said, oh Allah, I'm grabbing onto you now. You take care of this matter. So then the, the people start to move forward and try to attack the guests. And what do you know? Were they, were they just human beings? They were angels the entire time. So what happens when the guy starts to come? The, the angels, فَطَمَسْنَا عَيُنَهُمْ Allah Ta'ala says, when they start to move forward, we, we, we blinded them. The three men that came forward, Allah Ta'ala says, the light from the angels shone out. It, it started to shine. And it blinded everyone that was coming forward to Lut A.S. And then Lut A.S. understands. He said, oh, these aren't, these aren't normal guests. And they say, Ya, ya Lutu inna Rasul Rabbik la ilayk. Oh, Lut A.S. We are the messengers from your Lord. They will never even reach you. Let alone even touch you. You think they're going to touch you? You're a, prov- you're a messenger. Allah Ta'ala never lets his messengers die. That's why Isa did not die. Because Allah Ta'ala made the rule that inna la rusurana. We will definitely help our messengers. You are a messenger, Lut. You're not going to get hurt. No one's going to touch you. You need to travel by night. Get out of here. Start to move and traverse. Leave this area. Right? Don't turn around. Don't even look back because you need to move. Take you and your daughters and get out. And Ruth is thinking that maybe I should take my wife. Except for your wife. She stays back because she was someone who's okay with their actions. So she doesn't deserve to be saved. And this is what happens when people, they submit and they say, you know what? Let's just accept what they're doing. Allah says there's no distinction between the punishment of them and the punishment of you. Because if you are someone who approves, if you're okay with the action, then you're part of the action. That's what Allah Ta'ala tells us in the Quran, that his wife was literally legitimate. She's part of al Lut's family, but she's not saved with Lut because of that reason. So Allah Ta'ala says she will stay back. Whatever is going to hit them will hit her. Lut Aisam traveled and he starts to move and he starts to go. And he starts to leave and he, he, he moves as fast as he can. Isn't the morning time coming close? Lut, move, move, move. Lut Aisam tra- travels as fast as he can. He gets out of there. His wife stays back. The people stay back. And while Lut Aisam is leaving, he le- le- reaches to a certain area. We made the top part become the lower part. We inverted them. We flipped them. We completely flipped them. The way they flipped what a human being is supposed to do in life. They flipped what a man is supposed to do, what a woman is supposed to do. They inverted everything in society. They completely switched that a human is supposed to be a human. They made him into an animal. The same way they flipped everything, Allah said, we flipped them too. And we rained upon them brimstone, stones from the, from the sky, raining down and hitting one after the other, hitting one after the other. Musawwamatan inda rabbik. So each one it has been marked by your Lord for every single target. No single stone missed its mark. The same way the time of Abraha, when the, the elephants came to attack the Kaaba, that Allah made sure that every single one of the soldiers was hit. Similarly, in this place, every single one of the people were hit. And even the wife of Lut, she was made into stone, she was made into salt. And they say that when you go to the area of the Dead Sea today, the reason why the salt is the, the concentration of the water, the, the pH levels, it's, such a, it's so salty. If you were to go in there and were to even take a dip for a little bit, your skin will become bleached. Right, because of, of, and it'll start to you'll start to see all these different marks. It will look like you had like a rash or a disease. Because of why? Because the dead bodies and the corpses underneath the water is still seeping up up there, and it's still affecting the water today. And they said that the lower part of the area of Sadum, um, the area of the Dead Sea, is where the area of Sadum was. And yet, people today they'll use what Dead Sea salt. You know, you have to understand if it's a punishment of Allah, don't go there, don't go there, don't do any of these things. It is not far for any oppressor. And so this is the story of Nabi Lut that Allah gives to which Prophet? Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He gives it to us in our time because you and I are dealing with the same situation. Everything I told you today, I could have just changed a couple of words and you would have said we were dealing with the situation today. And what you and I need to understand is, first and foremost, the first thing we need to understand is to never budge, to never move, to understand your principles or your principles. I can respect you. I can be nice to you. I can be kind to you. I can say whatever you want, but I'm never going to budge from what I need to do. And I will invite you. This is the second thing. I will invite you to la ilaha illallah. I want you to become a Muslim. I want to give you kalima. But you need to understand what Allah has said in the Quran is real. That life is not defined by which person you go after. Life is not defined by what food you eat or what drinks you drink. Life is defined by what, who do you worship and what is your purpose of life. That's what life is about. That one day when we all die, we'll go to Jannah, inshallah ta'ala. And that reality is because why? Because we believe in la ilaha illallah. I worry about these people the same way I worry about anyone in our lives. Any non-Muslim, any kafir. They're kafir before everything else. And why Lut was given as an example for Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
Because Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Rahmatan lil Alameen. And you can say Lut Alayhi Wasallam is a type of Rahmah for the Alameen as well. May Allah give us understanding and tawfiq. Allow us to implement what we've heard. Allow us to become better to our families and our spouses. Allow us to become people that will become firm in this area. Allow us to become people that can survive this fitna and fasad. Allow us to become people that can pray in front of people, who can, who can, who can do zikr and sadaqah in front of people, who cannot budge from what it means to be a true Muslim, inshallah. May Allah give us all tawfiq. Jazamu Allah khairan. And wa sallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad wa alayhi wa sallam. Thank you. Also, um, so the atheism program, just very quickly, it's probably close to the four hours. They gave me six hours. I have no idea why. Uh, there'll be breaks in the middle. It's really three parts. One is the discussion of the history of atheism. Within there, we talk about evolution, the discussion of evolution. Within there, we discuss about the existence of God, how you prove the existence of God, and the issue of the problem of evil. Like they say that if God exists, why is there so much evil in the world? So these types of questions we deal with. If you'd like to come, inshallah, you're more than welcome. Uh, it'll be a very beneficial program, inshallah. Ta'ala. Uh, we would love to see you all there too, inshallah. Jazakallah khairan. And jazakallah again for the community here. I apologize if any of my jokes offended anyone. It really wasn't my intention, inshallah. Keep everyone a little lively, inshallah. Well. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salam, wa ala ashraf wa dhambiya mursaleen, wa ala anu sahbihi ajain. Rabbana zhalamna anfusana wa idham taqfir lana wa darhamna ana nakunanna min al-khawsirin. Taqfir lana ya maudana inna kanta rukuru rahim. Rabbana la tuakhidna inna sina wa akhwatna. ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملت على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا تنصرنا على القوم الكافرين يا أرحم الراحمين يا أكرم الراحمين يا ذا القوة المتين يا رحم الساكن يا الله يا أرحم الراحمين يا الله ويأسف في المرسي يا الله ويأسف في البلسنج يا الله ويأسف في الفقنس يا الله أرحم الراحمين وكمل السمن السنج يا الله ويبشر الإسلام على كلمة يا الله تجا رحمين please forgive us يا الله Please, Allah, forgive us all the mistakes we have, Ya Allah. Internal and external, Ya Allah. The mistakes, Ya Allah, that people say and don't say, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, you know our inner, Ya Allah. You know our private life, Ya Allah. You know how horrible we are, Ya Allah. But you're for Rahim, Ya Allah. You conceal the, Ya Allah. Conceal on Qiyamah, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, forgive all the sins, Ya Arhamur Rahimeen. Turn them into good deeds, Ya Allah. Please, Ya Allah, protect our children, Ya Allah. Protect our families, Ya Allah. Ya Arhamur Rahimeen. The same way Lut and Aysan went to the strong pillar, Ya Allah. We go to you, Ya Allah. You are the strong pillar, Ya Allah, in our lives, Ya Allah. Please, Ya Arhamur Rahimeen, connect us to you, Ya Allah. Allah, never miss a single prayer again, Ya Allah. 
And let's allow Allah to remember us to sing our ibadah again, Ya Allah. Ya Rahman Rahim, please make us from your awliya, Ya Allah, from those who you love, Ya Allah. Please, Ya Rahman Rahim, Ya Allah, forgive us, Ya Allah. Ya Rahman Rahim, Ya Rabbal Alameen, please, Ya Allah, don't turn us away, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, a dog will go to his master, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman Rahim, the, the, the master will let the dog enter, Ya Allah. We're coming to your door, Ya Allah, please let us enter, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Please, Ya Rahman Rahim, please bless his masjid, Ya Allah. Please bless the Imam, Ya Allah. Please bless the community, Ya Allah. Please bless the volunteers, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, the masjid runs by the ulama and the awam working together, Ya Allah. Please, Ya Rahman keep them connected and in love, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Ya Allah, please, Ya Rabbi Alameen, please put love between us and our spouses again, Ya Allah. Please revive our marriages, Ya Allah. Please connect the children and the parents, Ya Rabbi Alameen. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna kanta samyun alim. Wa tub alayna ya maulana inna kanta tawab rahim. Subhana rabbika rabbin izzati amna yasifun. Wa salamun alayl mursaleen. Alhamdulillah.